On Weibo, which has often been dubbed China's Twitter, news of George Floyd's killing and the protests were trending with these hashtags. While on Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, videos like this were being widely shared. Many of these videos were created by accounts on two widely viewed platforms, the Chinese state media publication People's Daily and television network CCTV. The actual violence that has sparked up both the protest movement but also the, uh, the aftermath, the looting, the rioting has been really catching the attention of Chinese state media in part to show that, you know, the protests in the United States are not, you know, particularly peaceful. At a time when global backlash builds against China over coronavirus and Beijing's relationship with the U.S. grows increasingly strained. China's cover-up of the Wuhan virus allowed the disease to spread all over the world. Events like the protests and the pandemic have given the Chinese propaganda machine a lot to work with. Here's a look at the narrative that's being crafted and why rallying citizens at home is critical to Beijing's power. Though the demonstrations in the U.S. have been largely peaceful, inside China, the protests have mainly been portrayed like this. Some of it is, is propaganda, but some of it is also just reporting the actual news, shows to the Chinese public that um, the U.S. is far from perfect. Maria Repnikova is a political scientist who studies Chinese propaganda. It's just a really kind of huge amount of information that's coming from the U.S. media scape on the protest movement into the Chinese domestic media sphere. So it's been really impressive to watch. Repnikova says state media often choose the most violent scenes, use dramatic music, and often feature President Trump. And I will deploy the United States military. I hope that you also use our National Guard. Call me. We'll be ready for them so fast. The U.S. president has condemned them and has, you know, kind of shown disdain for those protests. He's even threatened to use the military force in response to those movements. In June, the Trump administration placed restrictions on Chinese media organizations, including CCTV and People's Daily, calling them members of the propaganda apparatus. Repnikova says the U.S. protests have also come at an opportune time for Beijing. It helps to kind of uh, take the attention span away from what went wrong in China to what's happening uh, around the world, especially in America. In the early stages of the pandemic, as hospitals became overwhelmed and there was little information about the new virus, Beijing turned to a trusted strategy, suppress any critical news coverage. People questioned if the government officers knew in advance about all the risks and the infected nature of the virus. So the question about why early warning to the public or center Dr. Fu Qinghua has been tracking censor posts on Weibo since December 2019 by scanning more than 11 million posts that mentioned coronavirus-related words. He says Chinese censors covered up negative reports, from vloggers to a whistleblower doctor. Chinese authorities have made no public statement about the vlogger's whereabouts, while the government praised the whistleblower doctor Li Wenliang as a caring and committed doctor after his death from COVID-19. Meanwhile, state media content about China's prompt response, like two hospitals that were built in under two weeks, or Premier Li Keqiang's visit to Wuhan, circulated widely on Weibo and Douyin. Fu research found that around two out of 1,000 posts related to the outbreak on Weibo were censored. The state media produced a large amount of posts, so they basically occupy the majority of the numbers. Censorship spiked during key events like the death of the whistleblower doctor Li Wenliang or when the CDC published a paper confirming human-to-human -human transmission, which sparked an online debate about whether the government knew earlier. Many reports have also featured foreigners saying positive things about China. I don't blame them at all. They did everything right. Interviews with various individuals who have really good reputation uh, with Western media, the president of different countries, all of them kind of suggesting that the U.S. hasn't done that well, but China has been more responsible. 
这是总书记的小粉丝们和总书记的宠粉时间。While gauging real sentiment in China's state-controlled online environment is difficult, some of the comments under these posts show Beijing's narrative appears to be convincing to some social media users. And it's appearances that matter, says Repnikova, because this type of nationalism is the point of propaganda. And one way for China to secure its legitimacy at home, as tensions outside the mainland increase.